We have several updates tonight in both the federal and the civil cases involving the self-proclaimed white supremacist gunman convicted of killing 10 black people at a Buffalo supermarket. We have team coverage for you tonight with Channel 2's Rob Hackford and Dave McKinley, but we begin with Rob and we hear there's a potential trial date for the federal case. Yeah, Scott and Mary Ellis, it's a date that will be over three years from when this tragic incident happened here in Buffalo. September 8, 2025 is when the federal death penalty trial for now 20 year old Peyton Gendron could start. A date that federal judge Lawrence J. Villardo said was quote realistic Friday, but could also be moved forward or backward if needed. Not as quickly as I think any of us would like, but it's good to have dates, right? Zanetta Everhart's son Zaire Goodman survived the shooting on 514, where two more were injured and 10 lives were lost in the racist attack. A trial date bringing no relief, Everhart said, contemplating new questions with at least something in sight. Our family members going to testify. That's the biggest piece that I'm thinking about is how do we prepare Zaire for that mentally, right? In court filings, federal prosecutors pushing for a start date five months before September of 25. In federal court Friday, where cameras are not allowed, the gunman's team of public defenders opposing setting a start date at all, arguing it could set an unrealistic expectation, opting for a pretrial timeline only. Ultimately, both were set. It's annoying to keep hearing them push for more time, push for more time. Um, but I, yeah, just get on with it already. Judge Villardo adding this case will not end up on the back burner, especially with complicated questions like possibly moving this trial out of Buffalo yet to be considered. It happened here. It needs the trial needs to be here. Yeah, and meanwhile, in another courtroom just a few blocks from where I am here in downtown Buffalo, there was activity in the civil cases filed by both survivors and victims of, a, of the massacre. Dave McKinley is going to pick up our team coverage from me now. Dave. Rob, well, this is a case certainly like none other that we've seen in this area. In another regard, it bears similarity to any civil suit filed seeking damages. That is that a defendant may move for summary judgment. That's where we're at right now. That's when they ask a judge to conclude that there is no legal basis for a claim to go forward and therefore summarily dismiss it against claims that they bear some responsibility for the radicalization of the shooter. Attorneys for several widely used social media platforms contend they cannot be held legally responsible for the actions of third parties using those platforms under any applicable laws. These would include laws governing product liability, public nuisance and privacy of individuals. Those are and among others are ones that the plaintiffs are citing in their lawsuit. They say the victims deserve empathy and compassion and that they certainly have theirs, but what they don't have is a case against their deep pocketed clients. Empathy is not what we're looking for. We're looking for justice. We're looking for accountability. We're looking for change. And uh, that's what we're here for. Yeah. And you didn't mention once in there we're looking for money. No. Uh, they're looking for money. That's why they do what they do. Right. And that's what we're trying to prove here is that they're doing this for money um, to the detriment of all of us. In response to what lawyers for the social media platforms were saying, one attorney for the victims of the shooting said the interpretation of laws can be flexible and reminded the judge that courts are empowered to look at all of the circumstance. One her, uh, phrase we heard a lot today uh, during the arguments was addiction by design. That was being used by the plaintiffs in their contention that social media is constructed in a way to suck users in to platforms regarding whatever their interests may be and then keep them coming back and back and back again. And they claim in the case of gender and the teenagers visit to chat rooms about race radicalized him leading to his actions for which they contend social media platforms bear some responsibility. Live on your side in downtown Buffalo, Dave McKinley, Channel 2 News. Dave